So, hi, Greg. Um, when we wrote Transpersonal Leadership in Action, uh, we tried to address or, uh, a num uh, the uh, practice of transpersonal leadership through a number of different lenses. And one of the things we looked at was remote leadership, particularly that, of course, has been thrown into sharp relief by the pandemic and people having to work uh, remotely. But it is a sort of emerging trend which has been around since the technology started development in the early part of this century, I think it's fair to say. So um, what do you think are the, are the major challenges of um, remote working, hybrid working, and how can a transpersonal leader help? You're right to point out that remote working isn't a new thing. You know, it's been going on for centuries, actually, with cottage industries and all those sorts of things. So in actual fact, you know, remote working isn't a new thing. What is new, however, is the level of communication that we expect these days. So, you know, in, in centuries ago, you know, Captain Cook, for example, going off to Tahiti to, you know, do the transit of Venus, you know, once he was over the horizon, that was communication lost. But now, you know, we expect to have frequent email conversations, messaging conversations, and almost nothing happens by the person without informing their, their leader or their manager of what they're going to do, those, those sorts of things. And what the, re, the remote and hybrid working drew, I think, into sharp relief, as you've pointed out, is our dependence on that level of communication. So we've got technology now, we've got you know, things like Zoom, we've got things like Teams, which enable that level of communication to carry on. But you know, really the thing that, that remote working did was to allow people for the work to slot into their lives rather than their lives revolve around the work. So you need to have a huge amount of trust in the people that you're working with, that they're going to get on. And if they're part of a team, if they've got tasks to do, then they're going to go on and do it in their way, in their time, but to the specification that you need them to do. So the trust needs to be really high. Uh, I think you also need to be very clear on the why. You know, why are you doing this? What's the purpose behind it? Why are we dependent upon the work that you're doing and how it fits into the bigger part, the bigger thing? I think that those things are really important. Then you've got this thing called communication. So how do you communicate? And I think for the remote, for the hybrid leader, that has given a huge challenge because people are used to having people on hand. So, you know, you need to communicate less, if you like, but people have a strong sense of purpose. But some of the challenges that come up are, are things like where you've got the hybrid situation where some people are in the workplace and some people are working from home. Then there's a tendency almost not to be conscious that some people that your decisions affect aren't there. So you get almost an inside and outside the tent phenomenon. Oh, I happen to pass you in the corridor and we make a decision on the fly, which involves somebody who's, who's remote working that they've not been involved in that conversation. So gradually over time, you get a breakdown in communication and understanding going on between those people who are in the office and those people who aren't. Yeah, and the challenge to that sense of fairness, which is really important in the workplace as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's, there's a really, you know, great challenge to that, that absolutely that sense of fairness of who's involved in the decisions and how you manage them and, and all of mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Yeah, I'd absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah, the other thing I've noticed is it's quite difficult with new people coming into an organisation, making sure that they understand how things happen around here, you know, how, how we go about stuff and what, um, and that sense of common purpose too. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're talking about visionary leaders, don't we, in uh, visionary leadership as, a, as one of the essential elements of transpersonal leadership practice in leadership. And, and I, it strikes me that that's even more important when you're managing in a hybrid way. You have to be able to tell really great and inspiring stories about what you're all trying to do. And you need to have those available right from the start of somebody joining an organization so they get a, a strong idea of of what that what that suddenly uplands looks like and and which direction you're taking yeah that onboarding process in a remote environment is really really difficult it's almost as if you're looking through the letterbox yeah. of a house and, and trying to understand what's going on in the various rooms 
So what you need is you need to bring people out of those rooms and pr put them in front of the letterbox, if you like, and say, oh, OK, this is this is what we do. This is how we do it. This is these are the people that we interact with. So, again, it's communication on a different level, understanding that the person that you're communicating with has never even you know, is is not in the office. They can't get the smells, the 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 hum, the sounds. You know, you because yeah. you know when you go into an office environment, you can pick up the dynamic through all of these nonverbal signals. Of course, they don't get any of that. So you mm. need to be really um, up your game on the onboarding thing. So have proper schedules of people that you know you're scheduling people to talk with. What are they going to talk about? How are they going to do it? What are the dynamics in the office? How they interact with various so people who are on being onboarded can develop a mental image and a mental model of how the organization works even though they're not there absolutely true and that and that's not going to work in a sort of ego driven organization it has to be uh, uh, the leaders have to be thinking transpersonally i think in order to make this sort of thing happen thanks ever so much greg great